NASA and NORAD? Yup. On Christmas Eve, Santa and his flying reindeer are tracked by radar, satellites, and a worldwide network of Santa cams from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida and the NORAD headquarters in Colorado. 300 degrees, climbing to Angels 4-0. Today, NORAD runs a website and a phone bank to help kids track Santa's trip around the world. Attention, NORAD Santa trackers. Hot in from the Air Warning Center, we have just spotted Santa Claus in Kampore, India. In fact, NORAD has been tracking Santa for 50 years, and it all started by mistake. In December 1955, a Colorado department store ran an ad inviting calls to Santa. The hotline number was one digit different from the NORAD emergency phone. One night, the NORAD crew commander answered the phone. It was a kid calling for Santa. Bandit leader, this is Applejack. He played along and told the kid that he had spotted Santa on the radar. And the rest is jolly high-tech history. Am I seeing things? This object is unusual but familiar. It seems to be a man in a sleigh waving and smiling. Request instructions. Over. Uh, bandit leader, hold fire, hold fire. <laughs> NASA tracks Santa's mission from its control towers. But sometimes Santa shows up in unexpected places, like the International Space Station. Even with all this high-tech tracking, we still don't know how Santa manages to deliver his toys to deserving tots from Sydney to Cincinnati in only one night. But we're determined to get to the bottom of this Christmas mystery. Hey, how you doing? Take 68 and first, please. We're on our way to the Upper East Side of Manhattan to meet a professor of math. We hope he'll have some answers. How does Santa get to that one right there? That's where faith comes in. Faith you mean means like religious faith? No, no, no. Faith in Santa. Oh, oh, Santa. Hey, do you believe in Santa Claus? No. No? no. So I guess you're not going to get any presents for Christmas then. No, I'm a work Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bah humbug. We believe in Santa Claus, but we're hoping to get a little scientific backup. This must be the place. Hey, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. So how do you think he can really prove this? I mean, do you think he's got research and statistics to back all of this? I don't think he can prove it. <sighs> you're just a disbeliever. Hey. Oh, hi. hi. You must be you Dr. Must be Briggs. Mark and Mark. How are you doing? Well, nice yeah. to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you. I'm Matt Briggs, assistant professor of statistics, Cornell University, and professor of Santa math. So, doctor, how does the man in the red suit do it? Dr. Briggs tells us that Santa doesn't go chimney to chimney like we thought. So let me show you the math of why he really can't do it. So we'll start off with uh, something simple. There's about six billion people in the world. This is a six with a lot of zeros after it. That's a lot of zeros. But only about, oh, 10, 15% of kids in the world actually believe in Santa Claus, and we're only really interested only in Only 10 or 15%? Yeah, it's amazing. China is out, that? India is out. Our professor sums up the number of kids on Santa's list. Nice list, there is quite a few these days on the naughty list, so we can get this down further <laughs> to about 100 million. That's a big assumption there, Doc. <laughs> so how fast would Santa have to fly to get to all those kids? And this turns out to be 740 miles per second. So if Santa tried this, he'd be quickly launched into outer space because Santa has to come down the chimney and doing so would create such a tremendous shockwave traveling at this speed that the entire house would be vaporized instantly. I, I didn't know Santa was so complicated. So you're saying you, you've proven that he can't do it physically. So how is he doing it? He uses the science of chaos theory and the mathematics of probability theory. That sounds like how we run our office. <laughs> Chaotically. Uh, maybe this will help as the analogy. People have heard about the butterfly flapping its wings in Brazil. And a storm two weeks later that was headed for Detroit hits Cleveland. And the same sort of thing is happening the way Santa Claus gets gifts out to everybody. Why didn't you think of that?
So there's no uh, rhyme or reason for this chaotic theory? Yes, there is. I can show you. Please. Please. We need some sort of set of equations that move the gift from its point of origin to the kid's tree. Hmm. If I master this equation, would I never have to go shopping again in a mall? Yes, it could work for you. Excellent. OK. This is the gift momentum equation right here. The gift momentum equation. This, this is a force, and this is due to Santa. This is a, his sort of mysterious force. That looks all Greek. So all of this taken together, the math and the computer resources that Santa actually uses to cause all the presents to get to where they need to be by Christmas morning. So in other words, but Santa's going to be there for the kids. Exactly. And that's the important thing. So then there really is a Santa Claus. Of course. And he's gone high tech. <laughs> Phew, what a relief. Santa exists and this math lesson is over. Nice meeting you. Thank you, Doctor. Good luck. Good luck. Come back if you want to hear about the Easter Bunny.